Hey guys, this is how the Pirate Bay almost bought their own country. The Principality of Sealand is no stranger to piracy. I mean, it was founded by a pirate radio station. So in 2007, when the Pirate Bay was looking for a new home, the tiny country seemed like a perfect fit. For those of you who didn't catch our episode from a couple months ago, Sealand is a small World War II era naval platform just off the shore of the United Kingdom. When it was abandoned, a pirate radio station led by Roy Bates took over the platform. Because the tower was built outside of the UK's sovereign borders, Bates was able to exploit a technicality and declared the platform as his own independent nation. Full disclosure, I'm a lord of Sealand now. Even though world powers such as the United Nations do not officially recognize Sealand as an actual country, it is allowed to operate outside of the UK's jurisdiction and thus their laws. Much like offshore tax legislation, laws pertaining to internet usage default to where a server is located. As you can imagine, for a website dedicated to distributing copyrighted materials, a lawless country is the ideal place to operate. After a massive fire in Sealand in 2006, Bates' son, the Prince Michael Bates, put the entire country up for sale and the Pirate Bay began raising funding to purchase it at buysealand.com. Is that actually still alive? I believe it is. Meanwhile, during this time, the Pirate Bay was operating in Sweden, but increasing pressure from copyright holders, such as basically all of Hollywood, required Swedish laws to get just a little bit tighter. A number of cease and desist letters and takedown notices were sent to the site, but were all basically publicly mocked. Finally, in 2006, the facility housing the Pirate Bay's servers were raided and shut down by Swedish police. Now, those servers were only down for like three days before the site managed to get back up and running, this time with the logo of their pirate ship shooting cannonballs at Hollywood and a Phoenix Resurrect team, because I guess you need a little bit more subtlety there. Ironically, the raid brought a lot of publicity to the site and the amount of traffic skyrocketed, not exactly what Hollywood actually wanted. Now, mocking aside, the site's operators knew that they needed to change the strategy in order to continue to operate, and they then began negotiations with Sealand. However, that didn't work out like at all. Even with users donating tens of thousands of dollars to the cause, the Pirate Bay fell way, way, way short of Sealand's asking price. Now we've gotten a lot of conflicting information on this, but most estimates put it somewhere between a few million dollars all the way up to $750 million to buy the Principality of Sealand. However, even if the Pirate Bay had the money, they still would not have been able to buy Sealand. According to In Manharanha, the Spanish real estate firm handling the sale, I apologize for that, part of the new deal stipulates that the new owners would have to agree to the established laws and constitution of Sealand, one of which was not distributing copyrighted material, thus, you know, defeating the whole purpose of the Pirate Bay buying them in the first place. This wasn't even a first for Sealand. In 2000, Prince Michael, as well as co-founder Ryan Lackey, had created a new company, Haven Co. Their goal was to become a data haven, like, you know, the name, for security and anonymity on the internet. Sound familiar? Now, because this data center was quite literally offshore, their entire sales pitch was that Haven Co. could operate without any interference from world governments. Banking records couldn't be subpoenaed, online casinos didn't have to pay taxes, and of course, the most nefarious thing of all, pornography. Mm. I don't have to look at you like that. That was really weird. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was trying to be dramatic there, and then, like, for some reason, I started looking at you. I'm not sure... <laughs> I'm not sure I did that, I'm sorry. However, that venture failed after just a few years. The same isolation from the rest of the world that made Sealand appealing was also super crippling. Turns out that a private island tends to not have a very good internet connection, which is, you know, important for a data center. It would also be susceptible to DDoS attacks, espionage, or actual pirates. So that is the story of the Pirate Bay and Sealand, but if you haven't caught our original episode talking about Sealand, you should absolutely check it out. There's a lot of really cool history, it just has a special place in my heart. You know what also has a special place in my heart? Matt! So if you want to make sure that Matt continues to keep his LimeWire downloads super fresh, his uTorrents torrenting, then make sure to like this video, subscribe, and tell your mom to give Matt a hug. That'd be a great stepdad.